The hearing is officially called to order. I'm going to ask everyone to please silence all of your cell phones. This is the first in a series of seven hearings of the Ad Hoc Committee to Review the Criminal Justice Act. My name is Kathleen Cardone. I'm a United States District Judge for the Western District of Texas, and I'm chair of this committee. Before we get started, I'd like to introduce the other members of the committee that are here with me today. I'm going to start with those of, uh, of the committee that are our, a part of our first panel. To my right is Mr. Ruben Kahn, Executive <coughs> Director, Federal Defenders of San Diego. Judge M Mitchell Goldberg is here, United States District Judge, Eastern District of Pennsylvania. Judge Reggie Walton from the United States District Judge for the District of Columbia. And Mr. Chip Friendsley, he is the National CJA Panel Attorney District Representative. Also present from the committee are members who will be participating throughout these two days of hearings. They include Judge Dale Fisher to my right, United States District Judge from the Central District of California, Judge John Gerard, United States District Judge for the District of Nebraska, Ms. Catherine Rowe, Federal Defender for the District of Minnesota, Dr. Robert Rucker, Ninth Circuit Assistant Circuit Executive for Court Policy and Research, Mr. Neil McBride, attorney with Davis Polk and Wardwell, and Professor John Gould, our reporter from American University. Joining us by video and email is Professor Oren Carr from the George Washington University Law School. Also, please let me introduce the staff of our committee, who include Ms. Erin Brenner, Ms. Autumn Dickman, and in the back, Mr. Mark Gable. The, this committee is pleased to be conducting the meeting in Santa Fe, in order to coincide with the annual National Assistant Federal Defender Training. Our desire in doing so is to have the opportunity to hear from some of the participants of that training conference and to better take advantage of this gathering of Assistant Federal Defenders to focus on all matters before the committee. In particular, at this first hearing, the committee will be having a focus on issues involving the border, issues involving the training of criminal defense attorneys, and issues involving Native Americans. Now, just a brief history of the Criminal Justice Act. The Sixth Amendment guarantees to the accused the right to counsel in a serious criminal prosecution. To ensure that representation, it is now well established that after assessing the financial condition of the accused, the government may bear some or all of the costs of the representation of that person. The responsibility for appointing counsel in federal criminal proceedings for those unable to bear the cost has historically rested with the federal judiciary. In 1964, the Criminal Justice Act, or what we call the CJA, was enacted. It established a comprehensive system for appointing and compensating <coughs> lawyers to represent defendants financially unable to retain counsel in those federal proceedings. It also authorized reimbursement of reasonable out-of-pocket expenses and payment of expert and investigative services necessary for an adequate defense. Amendments to the CJA in 1970 authorized districts to establish federal defender organizations as counterparts to the federal prosecutors in those districts where at least 200 persons annually require appointment of counsel. It is now more than 50 years since that CJA was enacted. There are approximately 81 authorized federal defender organizations who employ lawyers, investigators, paralegals, and support personnel. They serve over 90 of the 94 judicial districts. Those federal defender organizations, in combination with more than 10,000 private panel attorneys, represent the vast <coughs> majority of individuals who are prosecuted in our federal courts. In April of 2015, I and my fellow committee members had the distinct privilege of being appointed by Chief Justice John Roberts to serve on this ad hoc committee to review the Criminal Justice Act. In doing so, Chief Justice Robert, Roberts listed 14 specific issues for us to review. They include areas of judicial involvement in the CJA process, employment and compensation under the CJA, quality of representation under the CJA, and the structure and effectiveness of the CJA. This is not the first of a kind study. Judicial conference policy has long supported a periodic, comprehensive, and impartial review of the CJA program. In 1967, the Judicial Conference and the Department of Justice gave Professor Dallin Oaks the responsibility of performing such an analysis. Then in 1993, a report authored by the Committee to Review the Criminal Justice Act 
which was chaired by Judge Edward Prado, was presented to the Judicial Conference. It was a 212-page report, and it described the historical evolution of appointed counsel in the federal courts, as well as presented detailed findings. It made 28 specific recommendations to improve the CJA program to include selection, training, evaluation, and compensation of panel attorneys, the establishment and management of federal defender organizations, CJA funding, and improvements to the administrative structure. <coughs> Many of the Prado Review Committee's proposals were endorsed by the Judicial Conference. It has now been over 20 years since that report. This committee is very thankful for all of the work that has been done by our predecessors, and in particular, we wish to recognize Judge Prado, who is an ex officio member of this committee. He's not here with us today because his position on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals requires him to be elsewhere. However, he will be present at our future hearings, and his help in framing the work of this committee has been invaluable. I want to address for all of you a little bit about the framework of this study. The study is expected to be completed in the spring of 2017, when it will be presented to the Judicial Conference of the United States Courts. Between now and then, this committee, with all of its collective experience and the views of all of its members, intends to gather information, examine the CJA program, debate the issues, and, after thoughtful consideration, make its recommendation to policymakers. These findings and recommendations will be documented and explained in a written report. The report will be prepared by none other than our reporter, Professor John Gould. It is the committee's hope that in today's world of computers, email, websites, we are able to sufficiently reach out to all stakeholders and give them the opportunity to provide us with ample information to document our study. For those of you who are not aware, the CJA committee has set up a website at cjastudy.fd.org, which allows anyone to inform themselves about this study and to submit comments. The committee will be conducting a series of seven public hearings. This series of seven public hearings is, is, a, is in an effort by the committee to hear from a broad spectrum of individuals and organizations and to engage them in discussion of these issues. The seven public hearings will be as follows. November 16th and 17th, 2015, right here in Santa Fe. January 11th and 12th, 2016, in Miami, Florida. February 3rd and 4th, 2016, in Portland, Oregon. March 2nd and 3rd, 2016, in San Francisco, California. April 11th and 12th of 2016, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And May 16th and 17th, 2016, in Minneapolis, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We are hopeful that the criminal justice community will come forward to present their views. All of these hearings will be transcribed for the public record, and today's hearing is currently being broadcast live through our CJA study website, again at cjastudy.fd.org. Okay, we're going to get started. Now, Sorry, I forgot Birmingham, Alabama. Thank you. <laughs> That's why we're a committee here. Um, and I do not recall the dates of Birmingham, but we will also have a public hearing in Birmingham, Alabama. I apologize. 